Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Marketing Automation Made Simple. This is your host Jovana from bumperleads.com and I'm on a mission to help you guys simplify and automate your business. If you're an e-commerce business owner, listen up. Today I'll talk about how to build a marketing growth system for your online or offline store. And this is especially important if you plan to run Black Friday promos, you need to start planning for it right now. Whenever I speak to business owners about their marketing automation platforms, I'm surprised how overwhelming it can be with all of the choices that we have at our fingertips these days, which is why I am on a mission to simplify this for everyone. And recently I've spoken to so many different brands. Some brands were making about 300,000 a month, both physical shops and only a tiny fraction of it was coming on <laughs> online. And so I think there is a massive opportunity for brands out there to really win big online. And, and I'm also surprised to see these brands that are winning big online, how good they are at capturing all of their leads, and especially if they're investing in paid advertising. And if you're tuning into this episode and you're wondering to yourself, well, I don't run an e-commerce business. Do I really need to listen to this? My answer is yes. I always try to learn everything from different industries. And I think sometimes we can really innovate in the space where we don't, you know, we don't play. And I think e-commerce does really well in terms of using new technology, especially around customer retention and building loyalty. And that's something that I don't see service-based businesses actually capitalizing on. So it's really good to take advantage from any industry and take something that works really well and apply it. That's probably the best recipe for success you can have. But the one what really struck me when I spoke to a few brands last week, really or two weeks ago, is that a lot of them don't have a what I call a very simple way of capturing leads. A lot of them don't use an email marketing platform. And sometimes I feel like I am <laughs> I'm repeating myself all the time when I'm talking to them, but how important it is to have a little pop-up on your website or something on your website just to go, hey, thank you so much for stopping by, coming to our shop. Here's something of value. You know, usually you'll see a discount when it comes to e-commerce. And, and so even just having something like that pop up and disrupt the user would be great. But we want to be smarter on how we use those pop-ups and things like that. So I just wanted to draw your attention back to one of my earliest episodes, and I don't have the... I don't have the episode number. I might have to dig a bit deeper and put that in the description notes for you. But I often think of a business as, you would have heard me, a belly of an octopus. And that's how I would view your database as well. It's a belly of an octopus. So we want to grow this octopus. <laughs> we want to grow the belly. And each tentacle is a channel that we bring customers to our store. So we have uh, SEO, which is really good for organic traffic. We have all the social media, which is great for organic traffic. We have referrals from happy customers. We have paid ads. We have our website, which is also a way to drive traffic. And, and then we have physical shops and things like that. We, all, we can also do, and some brands have done some affiliate marketing, some joint venture and partnerships in place to drive maybe big volume sales. And so I think it's very important to think of your business in that way, because over time, we need to have fresh people coming into our database and thinking about how to grow the database, because every year we'll have to run some promotions and things like that, like we have Black Fridays coming up very, very soon. And if you want to grow your business, you have to invest in all of these channels. But as marketers, we want to be able to test and measure and see what works. We want to make sure that we're spending money in the right areas in our business. And I think having an email marketing platform or any way to collect the leads that are coming in contact with you, you're going to drive the cost to acquire that customer very low. So it's going to be cheaper for you over time to acquire customers. Again, going back to Black Friday, it's a very big shopping bonanza event for a lot of brands online. And you will start to see 
as of pretty much now, Meta ads will pretty much double in price or triple or if not quadruple in price because this is where there is high competition. Brands are trying to compete for your eyeballs. But if you had a system in place already that has been collecting all of those leads and nurturing the leads, then when you're ready to launch a Black Friday sale, uh, people will be happy to, to hear from you. They won't be annoyed. <laughs> they won't be going, hey, I'm getting too many emails. And I'm going to share with you a strategy on how we would manage that uh, for these kind of promotions. I'm really surprised to see that brands still don't capitalize on having some kind of an opt-in, a pop-up or something like that. And, and it's very easy to see the benefit of this, especially if you can go on to Google Analytics, have a look at, or I usually look at a, a report called acquisition traffic report. On that report, you'll see all the top 10 sources. You can even filter it by a lot of different channels and sources of traffic. But I like to see email marketing in the top five, especially if you're an e-commerce brand. I want to make sure that you are sending emails on a regular basis and consistently. So you will also see on this report that the majority of people who visit your website are actually people who just browse and they leave. They never buy from you. And it's a big number. And I, I'll say 95% of your online traffic will leave your site and they will never buy. So if you're spending money on advertising, that's going to hurt. That's going to be quite painful for any business that you run. And this is why we need some kind of a lead magnet or a email capture form so that we can capture at least, let's assume you can capture at least 5% of the 95% of people who come to your web website. Let's assume the 5% equals to 1,000 visitors per month. And if you were able to convert 5% of 1,000 visitors, so online traffic is 1,000 per month. And if, if you do 5%, that is equivalent of 50 warm leads. This is people who actually liked whatever the offer was. It has to be something that is highly desirable, but easily digestible for your leads. And in the e-commerce space, you'll see 10% off or a $10 off or some big offer like that because we want people to buy from us. And, and this discounts work well if you want them to buy straight away, if you want them to spend money. So they're highly likely to spend the money. Um, there are other ways you can also entice them. You could say, hey, join our exclusive community to then get certain promotions. Only people who are on our list can get these types of promotions. And so, yeah, and there's other ways, giving store credits and things like that, where you don't want to, if you don't want to discount your offering. But if you can get 50 warm leads per month, what does that equal 12 months over a year? That, that's about 600 warm leads per year. And so this is me just being, doing some very conservative numbers to let you know that you're, if you don't have any type of way of capturing leads on your website, you're wasting your money. You're wasting your money on paid advertising. I encourage you to start thinking about creating a very enticing offer and start collecting people, especially if you're doing a lot of paid advertising. And paid, uh, paid leads are very different to referred or organic leads. And so that's another thing we're going to cover probably in another episode. But uh, this is probably number one you want to start doing if you're not doing that now, because the biggest sales event for any e-commerce um, business is the Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And, uh, and you want to be, you want to have as many people on your database as possible, because when you're ready to launch your promotion, when you're ready to sell, they're going to be primed to buy from you. So if you're a retailer, I spoke to somebody who is 80% of their business, and actually 95% of their business is actually physical shops. So I asked them, how do you grow your database? And they had a very clever way of doing this. They've actually got a QR code at, at, at the counter and they get someone to download an offer or to opt in to download a discount that they can use in store. And over time, that works. It really does work for people. But they didn't have anything like that working in the online space. And I think you'll have different leads that come into your shop, physical shops, 
as well as online stores. There may be different types of leads. But what I really liked about this particular conversation I had was this client has thought about all the ways they can capture their customer data. And and they didn't have a system, let's say, Clavio system or something expensive or fancy. <laughs> they just had a Excel spreadsheet that everything was going into. They had their POS system collecting all the data, but nothing was talking to the online store or to, to their inventory management or anything like that. So they really needed a, a systemized way of growing that. And I really like it because... Often when I speak to brands, they don't think about merging both online and offline customers. And we we do treat them differently, but they can still live in one database. And we can then start to build loyalty programs around that. And, And I think you can encourage people to go to your physical shop. You can encourage people to buy from you online as well. We can also retarget those same customers on different social media, which is part of your paid advertising strategy. Seasonal sales, they're very big. They're very big for certain brands. Sometimes your products might be selling really well in winter times, and sometimes it can be in the summer periods. It would be fantastic if you had a automated way of triggering different promotions that happen around the sales periods, the seasonal sales. We had a client who was selling turf, grass, this is grass, <laughs> turf, and, and most of the sales were coming through during spring months. But we wanted to make sure that they don't forget to send any type of campaigns during those periods. So we had an automation, automated way of following up with leads and sending promotions, prepping people to think about maintaining their loans with different products that they could sell and cross-sell for that particular client. The other thing that would work really well in type of seasonal sales Again, you can insert some kind of a countdown timer, some kind of scarcity. If they don't take action, they might miss out. And that can work really well for increasing your revenues, your store revenues. Now, the other most important funnel that you need to have, because the challenge with an e-commerce or an online store is that we don't have any humans no physical interaction with anybody on your website. So we have to mimic, we have to be very innovative. We have to think outside of the box. How can we translate you know, human engagement, <laughs> that customer service level onto a website, onto your digital platform? And, and so we need to think about using videos, using social proof, many pictures of customers or even your teams. You could even talk about what happens behind during the ordering process. So you might have like an onboarding funnel. When somebody buys, you can have three or four different emails showing them behind the scenes how you're packing the order and how you're delivering the order. And that kind of gets people excited and they anticipate there's going to be more and this fun, you know, this whole fun experience of waiting to get an order because that's one of the biggest challenges of an e-commerce is that you don't have someone to interact with and you also have to wait for something to be delivered and done versus you walking into a shop and purchasing and getting the item straight away. So if you haven't got this set up, you must have it and it's called an abandoned cart. An abandoned cart, it's when you are visiting a store and you love the products, you put them in the cart, but you seem to uh, change your mind or you get distracted and you forget to complete the purchase. Uh, So this is one way that we can't have a human online going, hey, come back, you know, don't leave the store, here's a discount, (laughs) come back. So we need to use an email marketing. You need to have an email that reminds people to come back to the shop and buy and say, hey, complete your purchase. This should make up about 30% of your sales. Even 60%, I see, of sales would come from that one abandoned cart and oftentimes even a very poorly designed one will generate some kind of sale because it's a trigger, it's a reminder for somebody to complete that action. So they they were basically waiting to buy and then something happened, they got distracted and they, they forgot to give you the credit card. And that's what we're doing. We're trying, hey, come back, complete your purchase. Even just a simple note will help you do that. 
help you get the sale. Now, there are so many reasons why customers leave the cart. And I'm going to just share with you top four. And if you can fix that on your website before you start investing, before you start paying for more advertising, and you're sending people to your store, but you have this thing, which is at least what I'm looking at a survey that somebody, a consulting company has done, where they've said, if a customer sees that they, your delivery costs are too high, they're just gonna abandon your cart. They're going to leave. Most people would put items in the cart, they'll try and get the shipping costs and then they'll leave. So that 55% of them will do that. Now that's a very high number. You know, that's, if we th- had a physical shop and 55% of our customers left every time we told them, hey, here's the price and this is how much it's gonna cost to deliver the item. And yeah, this is why free shipping is what, one of the very enticing offers if you don't want to discount your products. Having an item that is out of stock can be quite frustrating. So you need to have a way to remind people when your item is back in stock. When there is a problem with the coupon redemption, if you've generated a coupon and it doesn't work and the customer has to go through an email process, just to go through inquiry, send a note through the form on your website, you know, that's extra effort. They They didn't expect that. Now we're asking our customers way too much information to do that and and then when they can't find an item when they can't find an item that they want especially if they've tried it in your physical shop and then they go online they can't find the item that's a very very high abandonment rate and if we're also asking people to create an account which is i've seen that a lot happening online especially if you have default websites like with shopify you know usually accounts create an account process if you're starting, if you're asking them to create an account before you accept the money, that's another friction yeah, that might actually cost you the sale. So it's very important to go through your own checkout process just to understand how, how it can all impact your sales. So definitely have an abandoned cart a reminder. And if you have a default type of, let's say, Shopify store, they'll give you one hour, I think, by default to wait before you send a reminder to come back to the shop. Some platforms will give you less. Definitely give them at least an hour because people don't want to be bombarded with emails. And I would probably have one to three emails. And if you can, you can also retarget them as a paid strategy on, on Facebook and Instagram. Now, if you have a, if you're an e-commerce business owner and you have a sales team, you need to have the ability for your sales teams to yeah, capture leads, nurture those leads. You might be talking to wholesale customers, so you might be opening different partnerships with different brands, in addition to also having your retail online shop. So having a wholesale account, you might have a team that is dedicated to following up and nurturing those leads, you need to have a system that allows you to have a CRM as well. I have seen customers use free CRMs out there and then paid marketing automation platforms. And sometimes that data just lives in two different places. That's fine if that is uh, a clear separation of these leads and this is they don't need to mix together. But from a reporting perspective, if you want them all to be in one platform, I would encourage you to see everything in one if you can. So if a tool can help you, and I think this is active campaign that I mentioned before in previous episodes, HubSpot, you'd need to get sales and marketing together for the HubSpot one. And all of these platforms will be able to give you the view of following up with the leads with your B2B type of leads and your B2C kind of leads as well. And it would be nice just to have a pipeline of those. We have a client who is a winery in New Zealand, a very popular winery, and they often have a sales teams that are very high touch. You know, they're talking to wine members uh, on ordering and placing more, more wine. So it's something that you really need a CRM to do to remind you, to remind the salespeople and to help salespeople engage, send an SMS or use the phone to click and phone somebody to make sure they've got the order, following up on sales and things like that. So I think I've covered pretty much 
most of the things that I would expect an e-commerce brand to have. Oh, one other thing I have seen works really well is to try and personalize your email marketing. So if you know if you know things about your customers and you get you capture a lot of the information, so you might be doing a survey and that's something that you can automate and I would recommend that you have some kind of a systematic way of following up with your customers over, especially customers who have bought from you more than once. So let's say they buy three times and they spend over a thousand bucks with you. You know, these customers are VIP, I'll call call them VIPs. And you wanna be able to send them a survey, ask more information, try and get get as much data as you can so you can improve your marketing uh, in the future so you can attract more of those VIPs. And I think, if you are running surveys, uh, and we have seen some brands running surveys and they don't get any type of replies or response, it may be that you're blasting the whole database and it's not, you know, it's a bit of a hard ask to to ask the whole database to give you, you know, feedback on 20 or 50 different questions. <laughs> but people who come back and buy from you over and over again, they might be a lot more willing to help you uh, with filling out the survey and letting you know about what you could do to improve. In saying that, during that survey process, you could ask them, hey, would it be okay if we send you an SMS? Ask them for permission. So you can send them an SMS as well as an MMS as part of your promotions. Ask them for their birthday. You could ask them to give you not the year, but you can ask for day and month. And that should be enough to get like a birthday funnel so that it's triggered on the anniversary of their birthday. And that is something you, in a way you can personalize your email marketing with your leads. You can do that with cold leads as well. You could you could have the another thing that works and I would recommend with customers is to have a multi-step form. So if you have an opt-in, you could ask them on a thank you page, hey, what's your birthday? We want to send you something special on your birthday. So it's always nice to have that because Yeah, on my birthdays, I get pleasantly surprised by the brands that go, hey, it's your birthday. Don't don't forget you have this incentive. Come back and buy. So, you you know, people like to shop for themselves on their birthdays. Don't forget that. Yes. And so what I wanted to also touch base in this episode is a bit about Black Fridays. Now, Black Friday, as I said, it's a very, very big event for a lot of online marketers. And in order to to win big in Black Friday, we need to now think about how to stand out from cluttered inboxes. And one way to do that is to actually have a, I guess a plan, a pre-sale campaign going. You can start priming your audience, your database that you've collected with some messages around Black Friday. Now, some people want to control how many emails they receive from a brand. So it could be nice that you use your first email to invite them to participate in a Black Friday. So if they say no, or if they don't reply, I would exclude them from the Black Friday promo. I would, that would be my first step is exclude them and only talk to people who have expressed interest in participating in a Black Friday. Because during the Black Friday, this is where we send so many emails and it works. It really, really works. You do need to have a landing page because we're going to be asking them to register for an early bird offer for the Black Friday. Then you'll have like a thank you page with a CTA and some social media, social proof. And I would probably start uh, early bird sign up promotion about two to three weeks before Black Friday. And then all the emails around that will be, hey, thank you for registering, just reminding them about their early bird. And then when it's ready to get onto the Black Friday, you can talk to your whole database about what's coming up on Black Friday, just to build a bit of a hype, ask people to register, that would be a CTA. Tell them that this year you're planning to have the biggest sale ever. That's usually going to get people's attentions. And then you give them a bit of a last chance. Hey, this is maybe all in different emails. This is not on one email, guys. So then you tell them, hey, last chance to sign up. So it's a bit of a sales sequence to ask them, and encourage them to sign up, to participate in the Black Friday as early birds. Then two days before Black Friday, 
I would have a countdown counter showing and saying, hey, it's on. The Black Friday sales are on. Share it everywhere on social media, blog posts, everywhere. And give them the discount. Finally, give them the discount and issue it sometime maybe 7 o'clock in the morning. Usually seems to work. 7 o'clock in the morning. The earlier, the better. It's early birds. And and also re- just remind them the stocks sell out. And that give them a timeline. You, ma- you must make a purchase. The sales close at 9 p.m. And we can't guarantee the stock is going to be there. And then after that, you can email everyone in the database as part of your normal newsletter and start promoting your Black Friday at 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. So there's going to be quite a few different emails. Now, the one thing I haven't seen people do is they'll stop the sale when the Black Friday Cyber Monday is done. They'll just stop all the emails. However, I think there's going to be some buyers who have missed out. And I think it's fair to send them an email after Black Friday. So people who haven't purchased from you, it would be great to send them an email and just offer them a 15% discount. You could even be cheeky and say, hey, the sale is still going. Don't, we we have extended the sale if you needed extra, extra revenue coming through. So... Think about what your promotion could be for after Black Friday. And after that, we have seen, especially in different parts of the the world, but in Australia, it it works out differently, I guess, in different parts. But in Australia, Christmas is a very big event. This is the 25th of December. And that holiday season is when brands tend to sell quite a lot. And New Year's Day. New Year's is also a very big event for sale. Hey, before I leave you guys, I wanted to give a special shout out to one of my listeners. And these guys have been listening to my podcast and they, I believe, run the best e-commerce setup. I say e-commerce, but it's also offline as well. And they are called Curtains. I spoke to Otman Saifoui. I think that's how you pronounce your name, Atman. Sorry. And his co-founder is Yusuf. And both of these guys have done such an amazing job with the setup of their website. So I'm going to include their website here because everyone can learn from what they've done. Curtains.com, I believe. And it's spelled with the K instead of a C for English spelling. Curtains.com. And they offer subscription-based as well. And they've customized this WooCommerce checkout process that captures the data of customers and it eliminates friction during that process. And curtains are very, I guess, in demand for the guys in Dubai because that's where they're from. So if you lived in Dubai, you'd be getting sunshine almost 24-7, living in high-rise buildings and just absorbing all the sun. You want to be able to control the light and the heat that's coming through that. So these guys have been doing some amazing work in thinking about how to systemize their marketing and really commend them on putting it all together and making it making it work for their businesses. So I would highly recommend you guys check them out and thank you guys for listening. That's it from me now. Until next time, I'll talk to you in the next episode.